Well, hello everyone. I uh, decided to do a vlog today, uh, potentially a big storm chase. This is the 13th of June, Tuesday, and we have quite a good setup, probably our best setup of the year so far. Still high pressure here in Ireland, Northern Ireland. Very, very strong high pressure for a long time. Her weather has been phenomenal through the latter half of May, right into June. Just constant high pressure, so warm and sunny every single day and clear at nights. Just unbelievable weather. Definitely a favourite summer so far. I don't think anybody's complaining. But anyway, today the, the humidity has increased. There's, there's potential for some great instability today. Uh, last couple of days, England and Scotland have been scoring major thunderstorms and MCSs. But today it uh, looks like it might be our turn. It was actually chasing yesterday. Uh, Colin Webb and I were chasing away to the west around Oma and it was a bust day. The, the anvil shield from England drifted across the country and killed the solar heating and there was capping issues, so there was no storms fired. So that was a bit disappointing, but we're out again today. And I'm on my own here at the minute, but I'm going to be meeting up with Colleen and Nigel soon. And maybe later on, Paul Martin or John Fagan, depending on who's on the road. And of course, Rue is with me. It's very, very warm, very humid, so it's kind of difficult to be in for a long period of time. But anyway, I'm at Alan Craigan, I'm at a strategic spot. I'm going to meet the, the guys here, and then we'll start working our way westward for this afternoon and see what happens from there. Our target areas are Oma through to Fermanagh and possibly Sligo, Mullock Moor area. Um, the surface be there's two interesting forecasts issued last night and this morning, one by Owen Rice on our Facebook group and the other by Convective Weller. And both forecasts support one another and they actually have said that the higher resolution models are showing surface based CAP values in the order of 2,000 to 3,000 joules per kg. So that's a lot of energy. For Ireland standards, that's extremely high. That's like almost the best you can get. 3,000 CAP, that's quite incredible. I couldn't ignore that. Uh, so even though it's high pressure, with no shear, maybe 10 knots in the west coast, nothing in land. But with that kind of energy, you definitely could get, uh, could get very good thunderstorms. So with 3,000 CAP, we have a trough way out in the west, which might edge its way inwards from the Atlantic, which may help somewhat with a lifting mechanism and cooling the cloud tops. Uh, the upper cloud top values are at minus 40 in places, so if we can get the clouds to go high enough, it's looking good. And we may have several sea breeze conversion zones along the west coast. The models seem to be struggling a little bit. There's a bit of uh, variation on the output. Uh, nobody knows for sure exactly where to go. Some of the models are showing West Ulster for cells, others are showing bone dry the whole day and only the west coast. So it looks like our hopes are that based on model guidance and the position of this cape and the flow, that storms might fire over the midlands of the Republic of Ireland and start moving their way northeast on the southeasterly flow very slowly. As they do so they will build and become stronger. Uh, some very strong thunderstorms, possibly around Mayo direction, Galway, working their way up and hopefully into the Sligo region and brushing past uh, Mullock Moor into Donegal. Uh, so that's the basic plan anyway. So, so we're going to head to Oma, then if the cap breaks and if things look good we'll make our way to Fermanagh and then Sligo. So it's going to be the, our longest storm chase of the year so far. But I can't ignore those kind of conditions. A severe uh, thunderstorm outlook has been issued by convective weather and we have uh, the strong boxes over the, the high cape values in the west, so that just can't be ignored. Only thing is, the temperatures have it has to stay clear so we can get enough warmth. If the solar heating is strong enough to get temperatures above 23 degrees Celsius or more, then that in theory should break the cap along with a few other parameters. And if that happens, storms could just explode when the cap breaks. So, pretty exciting stuff. So, we couldn't ignore it. Uh, so, this is our second day out. We're going chasing. I thought I'd do a vlog. Um, if it doesn't work out, you probably won't see this. Uh, if we do get something, then I'll throw it in and I'll document the journey along the way. So it should, should be fun. Uh, love storm chasing. Uh, uh, I have to keep an eye on rear because the, the heat and the humidity is so much. We have tons of water here in the vehicle. I had to buy a pile of bottles. That might be one of our... somebody now. Anyway, right. Update later. Okay, uh, Colleen Webb has just arrived now as well. And I think... 
Nigel's approaching. No, it's not him yet, but he's on his way. So, Colleen, uh, we were out yesterday. I was saying earlier in the vlog, we were out yesterday. It was yeah. a bus day, oh, wasn't it? It was awful, wasn't it? Uh, the cloud cover and the cap sort of killed everything for us, but we're hoping with this big forecast today with the massive cape values, it might get compensated, so we're taking the gamble on it. So, how are you feeling, Colleen, anyway? I'm excited. Um, hopefully, it all works out for us. Um, just after yesterday, you know, it was a wee bit of a bust and a bit of a downer, you know, so, but today is looking a lot better than yesterday. Better set up and fingers crossed we'll get something. Yes, agreed, agreed. Uh, so, there's nothing more to say, Orland. It's very warm, it's yes, very humid at the minute. There's some mid level cloud, but there's also Alta Cumulus Castellanus clouds and there's breaks. It's definitely a lot warmer than yesterday, so that's encouraging. So, if these temperatures can keep up and if the trough can come in and we get these other parameters together, maybe the cap will be road in the west and we'll get something really cool, hopefully. We just can't ignore a setup because it's too no, big. It has to I be know, done. You have to go out no matter yeah, what. Don't you? It'd be a shame yeah. not to. I know, you don't go out, you don't get. So, 3000 cap, we're heading your way. <laughs> I just quick update, still warm and humid. We've got some sunny spells which is helping the solar heating and small cumulus clouds are starting to develop in response to that uh, instability. But a really stronger instability is starting to work its way up uh, around the early afternoon up the west. So once Nigel arrives, we'll probably just head on to the west, to the other side of Oma, maybe Cash, and uh, get a look at the radar and make a decision from there. But uh, you can't tell from the video, but it's very warm and humid. Okay, now we're in Cash. Uh, Nigel's met up with us as well. We just passed through Lack and Edenary. Right in Cash, a quick snack here at the phone station. Bit of an old faithful piss for us whenever we go chasing to the west. Has to be stopped in. Uh, so, storms are exploding down south. They're erupting, capitalizing on the 2000, 3000 Cape down there. So things are looking good, the solar heating's good, all the parameters are coming together, everything's working the clockwork. So if they keep moving northwest, hopefully survive into the late afternoon and evening we may get something. So after I finish this vlog we're heading straight west to Mulkmore near Sligo. Fingers crossed. Okay, our long wait is hopefully paying off. We're currently positioned at Mulkmore on the west coast of Ireland and below, unseen to our eyes, below the further south is a massive thunderstorm. Uh, the anvil on it is over 100 kilometres wide. It's technically in the, the, the threshold for a mesoscale convective system, an MCS, which is like a massive cluster, huge storm. Very rare in this country. So there's a possible MCS south of us coming up to the northwest. The sky is starting to cloud over now here. You see this grey? That's actually the leading edge of the anvil, the, the, the Cirrus anvil, even though the storm is still miles away. The storm may be half an hour away, maybe 40 minutes, hard to say. Very slow moving. But the sky is actually clouding over ahead of us, so that's the size of the anvil, it's pretty impressive. So, uh, very active lightning down south, it's kicked off down there, taking advantage of that 2 3000 cape. And we're quite well positioned here, we reckon the storm's either going to pass over us or to the side of us. Uh, we sh so we should see something, whether it has structure or not, we don't know. We don't know if it's high based, elevated or surface based yet. But, we're getting set up, uh, tripod ready, we've got the drones ready, calling set up here, uh, Ruga's watching, keeping watch for us. Nigel's away back, he's getting the lightning trigger set up. So we're all good. It's up to nature now, so hopefully it produces. Now way in the distance here, you can see this structure. This is Classy Bond Castle, a very famous uh, location and area of interest in this part of the world. Uh, over the years, we've come here on numerous occasions for thunderstorms, and most occasions we've uh, succeeded with uh, awesome thunderstorms. Always something treated us here, so it's a very special place to our hearts. And more often than not, you either see thunderstorms or the lightning going over this castle. So if there's anything, I don't know if there's going to be structure in the leading edge of this or not, but hopefully there is, because that's where the strongest cores are in radar. I'm hoping maybe to get them over the castle with a DSLR, or maybe get the drone out to sea looking back. Uh, but we'll see closer to the time. So at the minute, we're still... This is the anvil. Overhead is the blue sky. You can see a sort of broken alto cumulus there. And as I pan the camera down, the, the field of view isn't even wide enough. All this grey here, this milky white, is the Cirrus leading edge of that huge anvil way down south. So that's the approaching storm. And the anticipation is building. Okay, now we can't see any structure yet. The storm is approaching, the anvil's overhead. We can hear rumbling going off in the distance. Just boom, angry, distant rumbling. And the storm's getting closer. Just went on the, the internet there, seen reports from further south where power knocked out. A lot of lightning. Some people saying it's the best storm they've seen in years. Um, it's white cores on at the minute. Hopefully it sustains itself. It's creeping closer, but we can definitely hear the distant rumbles, so things are getting interesting. D 
DSLR set up, drone's ready to grab, lightning trigger here, and Connie set up here doing a vlog as well, and Rio's having a nap, <laughs> but she'll not soon. <laughs> uh, a few people turned up here too, enjoying the location. Little the spot, do they know. They, most of them don't know what's coming, <laughs> which adds to the excitement. Oh. Okay, this is uh, Nigel's lightning trigger setup on the DSLR. It's really just fired there before I recorded this vlog. Uh, distant thunder rumbling over here miles away and it's picking up. It fires the shutter when it picks up lightning. It's a pretty amazing piece of kit. Um, used with great success during our last storm chase uh, outside Portland Owen back in May. And I'll be interested to see what it gets now. So that's what it looks like if anybody's interested. Pretty cool device. I'm actually hoping it clicks when I'm filming this. <laughs> that's closer. Uh huh. For sure. It must be. Could be way up on that updraft up there. High overhead. Okay, we've now moved location around the corner. Found this nice field. We're set up here, shooting a time lapse. Um, the storm is now moving in over the, the mountains here and we're getting regular thunder now, it's getting louder. Uh, so far no structure, there's a lot of haze in the way, we, we won't know for sure until it gets closer, but plenty of thunder and lightning, I think that's for sure. So we're going to try our hand here and see what we can get. Fantastic, really muggy and humid. Oh, that's a loud one. You can see this updraft, you maybe can't now because of the cloud cover, there's a huge updraft bloom on the leading edge of it here. Yeah, we have a slight shelf cloud along the leading edge here in the distance. Only thing is this big core is going to get us here soon. A lot of thunder going on on the updraft overhead. We're hoping for some strikes close range here. Good care, Rio. Good care. It's the tripod that gets me in this case. Oh, I can see the outflow now. Uh huh. Is that Paul? Paul. Paul. <laughs> I was wondering who that was. Whoa! In cloud. Should have happened in the video with the drone video. Been roaming for the last half hour, Paul. <laughs> Yo, just a nice CG would be perfect now, wouldn't it? Oh, CG left, right there, right there. Right down in front of that mountain on that, almost on the beach. The last CG was there, so they're everywhere. That's the first one I've seen there. That was a good one. We're actually in quite danger here now.
Okay, it's the next day after the storm chase. I just wanted to do a follow-up video on what you've seen there. And the reason is that there isn't a lot of content on the video storm-related to, to our big chase, uh, unfortunately. So I wanted to talk just briefly about that and about the overall experience of the storm itself, just to finish off this video. So this storm chase video is not really so much about showing the, the main action of the storm, it's more of the build-up and then the how I felt about it afterwards, so unfortunately I don't have enough uh, footage of the storm itself and there's good reason for that. But anyway, what happened was, the day was a complete success in every single way, and for once the actual models were pretty much 100% bang on about the way the whole day unfolded. Uh, temperatures of 23 degrees Celsius were required for the cabin inversion to, to break. And initially we had some concerns about high level cloud, maybe suppressing temperature somewhat, but the models were shown uh, the, 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 uh, the high level cloud would would break up and we would we could reach some temperatures and uh, certainly Owen Rice was saying that too and has forecast very, very uh, detailed and specific about that and it happened temperatures actually varied across the country from 25 to 29 degrees Celsius so it didn't take long for that cap to break way down south storms exploded rapidly and they continued throughout the entire day in the Republic of Ireland, south central regions, and the storm started migrating slowly northwest at a rate of approximately 15 miles per hour. Thanks, Owen, for that one. Uh, and as the storms uh, started to develop and intensified, or intensified, they began to merge, which was expected as well on the outlook, and they actually started to develop into a mesoscale convective system. Once they were in the northwest of, the, of Ireland, they already had an anvil over 100 kilometers in length. And it kept building and getting bigger and bigger. And this time we worked our way down to, of course, Slego and Mullockmoor on the west coast of Ireland, as you've seen in the, in the footage there. When we arrived, it was very it was cloudy, slightly cooler. And initially we had concerns that it would kill, kill the storms. And the sky was very claggy. It was like a very low mist, grey mist. So the visibility wasn't very good. We couldn't see anything in the sky, more or less. But anyway, we, we were online, we could see developments, and Owen was chatting with us as well about uh, what's been going on, so we got to watch everything coming up. So anyway, uh, we got in position, it was actually such a lovely, warm, hot, humid day, and Nigel and Colleen and I just sat at Mulligmore in our favourite location on the grass, ate our snacks, pretty much had a picnic. Uh, Rio was with us too, we just chilled out, we knew the storms were coming, they were moving slowly northwest. They were probably this stage two hours away, and if they kept if they kept surviving, then we were going to get them for sure. We were in a good enough location, so we just, it's just a matter of waiting. It was nice to be able to get somewhere ahead of a storm well in advance and be able to relax and enjoy the location in anticipation of what's to come. But as the day went on, you could sense the atmosphere changing. Eventually, the huge anvil on it became visible in the, in the sky to the south of us, took up a large area of the sky. It was almost like a, a milky grey, hazy, cloudy mist just coming in covering the entire sky and if you didn't know your clouds and you weren't trained in the subject you, you wouldn't know anything was happening you just think it was cloudy you didn't know there was a storm coming lots of people walking around Mullock Moor enjoying the view they didn't know what was on the way but we did <laughs> anyway we, get, we began to hear thunder maybe when the storm was 10 to 15 miles away and I would say we were hearing distant rumbles for about an hour easily before the storm even arrived and we could still see nothing but grey clouds <laughs> And, and haze and eventually suddenly the thunder got louder and this monster storm just appeared seemingly within minutes I think we could st and we changed the cases around the corner to the field around there so we get a better view because it was slight the stronger core was slightly to the east of us uh, we actually had two cores one in front of it one going over the top of us which is very lightning rich and the other one just ahead of it slightly east and that one had more structure so as the storm came into view it was apparent it was slightly elevated and the updrafts were enormous on it absolutely gigantic solid all the tires, charcoal grey in colour. And as soon as we saw that coming into view, we got set up in the field, got the cameras set up. The next thing you know, the storm was already on top of us. So we had maybe half an hour more of lightning before it hit us. There's Rhea. <laughs> yes, Rhea. You did well yesterday. I know. Who are we talking to? I'm talking to YouTube, Rhea. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rhea, Rhea did so well yesterday. Everyone, that was a long drive for her. So she's a real champion. She didn't get back to 10 o'clock last night. Oh, she did so well. Uh -huh. She deserves a cuddle. <laughs>
But <laughs> look at the area. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that rascal. Anyway, <laughs> so we're watching the storm coming in. The leading edge of it had like an elevated shelf cloud, which is the only sort of structure visible. So it wasn't really a structure storm, but that part was quite nice. And I managed to get the drone. What I did is I set the DSR up at the right angle. Began shooting the time. Maria began shooting the time lapse. And then I put the drone in the air and did a over recorded video of the storm. And I'd say within 15 minutes or so, the storm was right on top of us. There was a few CGs and either end coming down, but most of the lightning was just in cloud, way up within the updraft tower and embedded within the core. So we could see the core just lighting up with lightning, but we couldn't see the bolts. And because there were so few CGs, it became very difficult to catch CGs, you know. So I got two on the drone, uh, as you'll see in the video clip there, on the other side of the storm, on the wide angle. You can see just two CG bolts just striking down pretty quickly. Uh, I was quite happy with that one, uh, but that was really it. The rest of it was all in the cloud and just not really catchable on the camera. You know, the storm had to literally had to grab the gear and just run, and I just threw everything in the van. I didn't have time to put the drone in the bag, anything, everything was just the drone in the bag, or the van, and went and chucked through into the front seat. And then the storm was on us, and after that was just heavy monsoon rainfall. It was actually lovely to get, actually, after all the heat we've been having for weeks. It was nice, mild, warm rain, you know, but it was it was just refreshing. Uh, and it was just a constant on and off under lightning for ages. Uh, bolts again, some CGs, but mostly in crowd bolts. So it was a very active electrical storm. But the storm passed through fairly quickly for us. So our moment of joy of beginning to enjoy the storm was very short lived, considering the amount of miles we drove. So it was. Kind of weird that way you know so that's why there's very little in the way of photo opportunities and video of it so it was more of a a visual experience an emotional experience really and a, and a success because of what happened uh, that storm turned it turned into a mesoscale convective system which is an mcs for short and that's like a, a very large complex of storm cells a bit like a large multi-cell uh, the storm surpassed that criteria and at its peak as it was passing over us the anvil on that storm was not far off uh, the the length of Ireland itself, so it was an absolutely humongous anvil on that thing. And the upper cloud top temperatures at that time were minus 60 degrees Celsius. Quite impressive when you consider the ground surface temperatures were between 25 and 29 and minus 60 up the cloud tops. So a very impressive storm. But if you look at the history of that storm, not just what we've seen of it coming in during that short period, if you look at, at its history, it's actually quite impressive. That began way in the south of Ireland. It had been going all day long, propagating with more or less constant lightning the whole time. Uh, from the from the south central Ireland the whole way up to the northwest, for, I don't know five six hours something like that, and people were getting uh, lightning reports the whole way up the country, flash flooding, and there was even uh, power knocked out in places, and then it came up to us, done its job over us, and moved off to the northwest and eventually dissipated. And then there was so much rainfall from the back of it, and all we ended up having to to leave and, and head back home again, and eventually got into the clearance afterwards and uh, made it back home for about ten o'clock or so. So about nine and a half hours on the road. So it was quite a long day, but a, a very impressive storm, considering that there was hardly any shear at all. That MCS developed just from extreme instability. It looked like the, the cells, when the, the storm started first develop, and the outflow from those cells seemed to trigger new cells along the, the front of that outflow boundary, and that seemed to be what happened, and this cycled along the whole way across the country. So very, very interesting. Just goes to show you don't always need shear for get large storm complexes. But a, a very interesting day, it's great to be back in Mullock Moor, our old chase location, it's great to sort of unlock the storm season on a big day out again, a lot of miles, uh, really good fun, good adventure, good crack, uh, really enjoyed it, a, a darn good chase, so the only thing is it's left me hungry for more, I've only got a couple of aerial images out, a couple of video clips, um, a DSLR time lapse, but I don't know if they're that great or not, it is what it is, that's the way the storm looked. So there's more potential later this week, uh, possibly in the west again. I don't know if I'll get there or not this time. We'll see. Uh, maybe more on Saturday or Friday, Saturday, and again maybe next week. So we're we're having a fantastic summer here in Northern Ireland. Just heat, sunny, high pressure, unbelievable weather. Just honestly the best I've seen in years. I can't complain. And now we're getting the thundery episodes, which is just what I want as well. So it really is amazing stuff. So a brilliant time here in Northern Ireland. We're having a crack of a summer. Uh, we might get another week out of it of hot temperatures again. Uh, high pressure still lingering around, so we'll see how long this lasts. Um, anyway, top class stuff. But I've, I've more uh, I've, I've more goals to achieve with the storm scenario. I need to get structure. I'm after dramatic structure. I'm after like a really dramatic gust front or shelf cloud. Uh, certainly a flanking region, big updraft towers, rain-free bases, that kind of thing. Um, 
maybe nighttime lightning at some stage, and definitely a funnel or a water spout or tornado. I'm after something very photogenic, so I'm, I'm still hungry for more this season, and I'll be chasing as often as I can. Love this time of year. And meanwhile, it's clear tonight, uh, so I'll be on the lookout for noctilus and clouds. Uh, they've started to appear again. Not spectacular, but they're starting to get more more complex as the days go on, so hopefully I'll bag one of those soon too. So a great summer, and hopefully, fingers crossed, plenty more action to come. So I'm starting to slabber here a bit, but I just wanted to finish this short chase video off, telling you about what happened. Uh, so can't wait for more. Uh, love thunderstorms. So fingers crossed, I got more this week. I got chasing again, and we get to see some action. And one thing I'm lacking so far this year, I've got drone footage of convection and storms, but I don't have a proper time lapse yet of something really cool. So I want to get two or three or more really good time lapses of storms just to I can put into my end of year video at the end of the season so uh, the chase goes on but anyway great to meet everybody there and hopefully we'll get out chasing again very soon and Ria is a champion here aren't you Ria? you're a good girl yes you're a good girl you're amazing putting up that big drive yesterday ah oh, you're amazing oh, I don't know how you did it you're amazing you put up with it the whole time aren't you you're a good girl yeah, uh, Ria's a good girl, yes. <laughs> okay, right, I'm going to call the day and on to the next chase. Thanks very much for watching, everybody.